Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Felix and Peter and Tivo. Uh, all well familiar faces and friends. So uh, we're in great company of uh, friends uh, today. Um, we are going to hear something now about uh, Singularity Net Ambassador Program. And I think Peter will give a presentation and then maybe Tivo and Felix will give their uh, uh, perspective on it. And maybe I'll have a few questions. I don't know. But first, guys, let me uh, introduce you properly. So Peter has been a Singularity Net community member since the start and since two years working on the marketing team as a community manager. After studying psychology and working as volunteer manager, Web3 called. With a focus on community-driven initiatives, founding and facilitating the ambassador program was a logical next step. I know, Peter, that your true heart and passion lies in the ambassador program. Felix, uh, an ambassador at Singularity Net and Cardano Foundation and co-founder of The Swarm, and generally full-time engaged in building bottom-up and grassroots community infrastructure and governance in DLT ecosystems. And then, of course, Tivo, PM and engineer at Voltaire Swarm as well. I think I might also call you co-founder, if I'm not mistaken, building decentralized open source services, project management tools, and governance services. So that's a wonderful guy. So we have one person from uh, Ambassador Program and Singularity Net, and we have two person, people coming from uh, the larger community uh, system between Singularity Net, uh, uh, Cardano, and, and, and perhaps even wider. Um, so it's a very interesting mix of perspectives that we are having here today. So, Peter, without uh, further ado, let me give you the stage one moment. And um, yeah, looking forward to hear your experience on the ambassador program. You know, I was I, 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 I can't be in all those meetings all the time. I was there a number of months ago and I was there this week. And I really noticed that how much it has grown and how much more structured and professional it is. So can you tell us a little bit more about that, how that came about and, and what your plans are for the future and not your plans, but the ambassador community plans, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks a lot for that intro. Um, yeah, so the Singularity Net Ambassador Program came about um, about a year ago, and it aims to... Um, Basically, to, to be a way to facilitate community members to contribute to Singularity Net's mission uh, towards beneficial AGI. And well, uh, also, I decided to not go for slides, uh, to not have a presentation, but more a chatty setting. Um, but yeah, but broadly, um, first, would like to talk a little bit about um, how we even approach the whole um, ambassador program. And after that, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the past, the present, and the future. So, yeah, that will be the broad uh, outline. And, it, yeah, we'll also bounce a little bit back and forth between uh, also Tefo and Felix. Um, yeah, so starting out on the, the approach we're taking, uh, we're, we're constantly um, figuring out a yeah, kind of a balance between providing structure and freedom to community members who want to participate into the program. Um, we've got a, a quite a nice group and that's grown quite a bit. And we started out with a lot of freedom, like pretty much. Um, yeah, we were kind of very open to suggestions. People could um, suggest what they wanted to work on and, and then work on it. And yeah, we basically wanted to let everything emerge. Um, the only thing we uh, we did uh, push like top down as a, as a type of task that uh, people could help out with. Uh, there was blog post translations. It kind of felt like a, yeah, a low hanging fruit in a way, a simple task with a high potential impact. 
And outside of that, quite some uh, cool initiatives emerged uh, besides the translations. Uh, my personal favorite would be the uh, podcast series done by Julian we had uh, going for a while. And also there, he had a complete uh, like full creative freedom on, on content and branding and promotion, etc. Um, yeah, that, that initiative unfortunately didn't quite work out uh, for long term for him personally, but um, he did lay some, some very nice uh, foundations. And it, I thought it was a really cool way of seeing somebody step up, uh, take initiative and run with it. And yeah, that was for me um, yeah, a really cool example of um, the freedom there is. Um, at the same time, the, the yeah, the, this balance between freedom and, uh, and structure, at some point we um, uh, walked into a lack of structure. Um, so there's all kinds of topics like uh, quality assurance, um, just a lack of direction. Um, yeah, these kind of things emerged and that kind of resulted for the past two months, I would say. We've made uh, great strides there on improving there and creating um, structure based on, on demand, let's say. So not forcing it, but seeing where it's needed and then coming together and then building the structure. Um, yeah, generally speaking, we're we're quite big on openness and transparency, um, as you might imagine. Um, that's yeah, for, for me, it's it's the best to be like. There's no double faces. There's just straightforward. This is it. Go with it. Please join or don't if you don't want to. Um, Felix Otafa, anything from your side on the approach we take? Inside of its parents, I would definitely say I'm extremely surprised how Singularity Net Foundation really executes this development of the program because it never really top down. It's really facilitating much more the Americans of the Ambassador program. And you're playing, in, and especially you, Pete, I think I'm pretty impressed how well you arrived to facilitate this emergence really from bottom up, engaging, empowering community members, not tell them what they should do or shouldn't do but simply guiding a whole environment where people between themselves are able to identify what do we do, what do we want to do, or what do we want, don't want to do. And I think this plays a really crucial role, because also when looking on Crestwood, I think it was mentioned also in other discussions before, also discussions, by the way, uh, culture, right? That we have really this emergent culture, which provides a whole environment where we really see people happening into really a high motivation, engagement, and commitment, and building much more than actually just a program, I would say. And individually, from my own perspective, I would say this just has been so far an amazing experience, and really glad that we are able to add our humble sense for building and developing it further. Yeah, I like the fact that uh, what you mentioned, like the off the cuff, uh, like freedom and it, what you think is the next viable step and the people who joined and the opportunity for experimentations. And I think it was a good timing where I was also looking, okay, we had experience in Catalyst and in Swarm and where could we leverage these learnings of how to incubate these new opportunities and uh, your space, like, perfectly fit to, to test out and new iterations of how could we start collaborating in, in higher scale and, and build structure based on the people who join and how they want to do it. Yeah, for me, that was super nice to uh, experience at the very early stages of the program to have both of you coming from uh, Catalyst Swarm site um proper experienced and full of ideas and and things to experiment with like from my point of view that was like okay we can do it sure yeah let's let's go <laughs> that was just yeah it's amazing uh Jan? yeah i'm not sure if it is is it okay if i ask a question now and then of course so so what what i'm really really curious about um and uh, is the perspective from uh, from Tifo and Felix, because you see uh, more than we see 
you see uh, from a certain perspective what is happening in Cardano Catalyst, you see what is happening in deep funding, and you see what is happening in Ambassador. So I have two questions actually, but the first question is, I know already that the uh, characteristic of how Peter does things and how I uh, do things is a little bit different. I'm not sure if it's just uh, personal character or if it's also differences in the program, probably both. Um, but I'm really curious about your perspective on that. But what are the differences and what are uh, the positive things that you see in Ambassador or what are things that can be improved in other programs like Deep Funding? First thing I will say is that, like, there was a concept like rapid funding mechanism that started also in Catalyst, one experiment. And I think Ambassador program kind of visualized more that streamline of potential to, the, to put that incentive right at the start, at the play, where in deep funding it's more, more at the time, more planning, more structuring, more like understanding the guardrails and then backend ship that as a iteration or let's let's play this game where in Mombasa it's more like simulation happening at the same time like it's a bit more every week changes <laughs> every day changes every meeting changes things and what's your perspective on that Felix I do not second what you said already <laughs> well, I'm not sure what actually to add to this because yeah then, then, I would literally say the same just in other sentences, maybe, or other words. My other question would be, um, what is the secret? You mentioned, Peter, that you started out uh, being very open, and then you saw that things were not quite structured, and in the last two months, there is structure appearing. <clears throat> I think that is a great thing, if you can let things grow, and then let structure emerge instead of just uh, putting it on top. So I would like to know what is your secret there? How do you do that? Well, the secret to letting things emerge is to not do too much. Uh, first of all, like things emerge. So yeah, uh, that's that's just. Uh, I mean, not just doing nothing, of course. Um, there's a. Um, I think it's small nudges here and there, like putting the right person with another person, putting them into contact that can create magic in itself. And if that happens at the right time or yeah, it's, it's, it's small things like that, I think, which, which can have super big outcomes. If, if the interaction has this kind of magic. And, and, and what made that pivot then that first there was uh, unstructure and then a structure suddenly appeared was that just the natural way that things go if you just le uh, let go or did you do specific things or did the community uh, uh, do specific things to to uh, yeah connect? exactly yeah the, the latter um for example at some point um Frandano and Fly stepped up saying like well with We've got some well, not not problems or issues, but like if we keep going like this, uh, that's not really gonna go the right way. So we need, um, I think that was related to quality control, um, just to maintain a specific or like a certain level of, of um, quality on on output for, um, I believe, that, yeah, it was marketing guilt related. Because in a way, if you tell people like, well, we need an infographic. And that's it. Like, there's no 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 strategy behind it, but just like, well, go make some nice images which have something to do with singularity. Net. Like that, that that's way too too vague, and that that doesn't get you anywhere. Um, and then yeah, basically, I'm not sure exactly how it. Um, yeah, they they made that uh, pretty clear, and it might have been magic. Actually, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Well, I, I think it is your magic, uh, your Zen master magic, uh, being able to resist, to uh, do. Uh, in, in Zen, not doing is the biggest thing uh, to reach. And uh, there I can really learn from you. 
um, uh, sometimes you have to let things emerge and let things go and then to see and to give it the opportunity to grow by itself. And I can totally imagine that then you have to go through a phase where, you, where maybe it looks like chaos, but it's a necessary phase to let these structures and these people also that, that do these things uh, emerge from that. So yeah, thank you for that answer. And um, I'll keep learning from you. Well, yes. well, well, I would, sorry, Felix. Thing I would like to add is actually, from my perspective is really start with simple tasks, with real simple things like in a test game. You can, have, you should definitely should have a strategy and a longer term goal somehow. The best thing you can do is the next move, the only one move, and you repeat this. This is nothing else. What you do in chat, you repeat moves, right? And I think for, especially for ecosystems like this, where you definitely want to have strong contributors, you can't expect from them what you expect from yourself. And you should not even aim to get them as fast as possible to this point where you may be able to expect from others what you expect to from yourself. But more, how is the process? How can the people educate, onboard, introduce themselves to the ecosystem? And how can we make sure that the value which is built through really simple repeating tasks does not end up in, into a chaos? Then let's say, for example, because of this, this would be, let's say, the danger of it, right? On one side, providing the comfortability and the trust to people that, hey, here is a space you can engage. We want you to engage. We look on you, we help you, we facilitate and we guide. Though, on the certain side, you also have to provide certain, let's say, security and responsibility to the people, right? Because this is something that needs a lot of time for being built, actually. And then you have the whole thing with tools. All the tools we need don't fucking exist yet. <laughs> That's mostly a challenge. <laughs> and people understand this quite quickly. And then we have problems like, oh, okay, we have people from all over the world, from different cultures, different nations, speaking different languages, trying to come together in this whole thing. And then once again, really shepherding, not being project manager, a CEO, or CEO, or whatnot, is, let's say, vertical hierarchy, but much more like guides and shepherds, right? I think if people understand this, they have a much higher motivation to engage and to participate and to sign commitments and responsibilities over a long time. And that's why I actually like this space where you have like, oh, the tools don't work, what work? Humans just do operations. They, okay, I manually do this, I find this, I share this, I create this. And then it becomes a coordination of people being present. And instead of tools, you have Tools, workshops, and like these kinds of entities of vision that what is the expected outcome from that. And yeah, that's cool. And then comes governance, which we are still trying to figure out. <laughs> but I think it's going to be amazing. Wow, that's so cool uh, because you also give people the uh, option to interact with each other and to become a community, etc. And I think it's also related to expectations, right? If I expect to come in a situation where everything is perfectly aligned and all the tools are there and, and it, it's, it's streamlined and one little thing doesn't work then yeah i might get angry or frustrated or whatever but you if you come with a mindset like we have to do this together the tools are not perfect people not yet maybe in a couple of years but let's find a way to collaborate together uh, i think that expectation management if you set that then you have won already half of the of the game yeah, it's true. At the same time, this makes me think about D-Work, uh, which was a tool introduced to me by Swarm. And um, at first, I thought it was amazing, was all you need. It's like, well, you can log in with your Discord account, and then automatically everything just works. And you, it's like a Trello board, so it's for task, uh, task management. And it, it is super nice, and it works for a lot of things. But uh, we're not bumping into the fact that we're kind of trying to use it for too many things almost. Um, like 
for, for example, uh, time tracking on a like on a project basis for um, for a, a week uh, time schedule. That's not really working out in D work. Uh, there's all kind of practicalities you bump into and uh, other. Um, for example, in the video work group, um, people are using it for um, collecting portfolios. Yeah, that's not what you do on a Trello board. <laughs> um, but in a way, it became such a central tool that, yeah, we almost, it feels to me at least, uh, we almost kind of went all in there. And then at some point, you get pulled back by by reality. And it's just like, hmm, okay, we need to look around and, and see what other tools there are and what else we can use. Yes. Also because Peter mentioned guilds and work groups, maybe nice to give a short overview. We got from a very simple first draft where we had just some, how many have been there in the beginning, PT would tennis peoples as a loose group, just figuring out, ah, what should Ambassador program be about? After one year now, because we just had the anniversary of the Singularity of Ambassador's program actually this month. And it evolved into really self-emerging holocratic system where we have multiple fully independent and self-sovereign working groups and guilds, which organize themselves pretty much on the activities, on the page, on the scope. And from there then, we see, ah, cool. And now we're moving a little bit into the next step. So first people coming together in loose group, then splitting off saying, ah, cool, I really got in this, I really got in that. So they discover a little bit their own focus areas and topics, then formalizing groups around this. So called them war groups or guilds in this regard, the holocratic model, where we wanted to make sure that it's not one single entity who has control over all of them. So we went a little bit in this direction of a cellular-based model, where each of these groups is fully accountable and responsible to the fucking self. And then out of the structure, now we see a merging government framework step by step evolving, which really ties nicely together with this income down paper as well, as it includes Ambassador's program there. And I think really beautiful approach here is when looking back on this is nothing of the dwarf plan. Having some ideas, some visions from everybody, but the whole thing emerged by itself and has a really massive fit to the individuals. Because when you look on the space, we shouldn't even speak about community because we handle governance and we have our own economics and DLP and, <laughs> and all this stuff, right? So I like to speak much more as a society. And the society only works if you have a culture. And when you analyze culture, then what's culture actually? Culture is nothing else than exactly what happens here right now, right? Peer-to-peer -peer interactions. And if we have a system which does not emerge by right, this peer-to-peer interactions, where individuals actually are able to identify themselves with the governance system they live with, then, yeah, I think on the long term, lots of shit would simply break apart. So in this experiment, I'm really curious to see how this will play out, because it's really designed step by step, a little bit like the Gothic cathedrals. There haven't been a master plan to build them up. They've been over generations, step by step. And look what you got out of it. I can beautiful stuff at the end. So a little bit the same approach, actually. Which is quite interesting to observe and be a part. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, it's, it's like you say, it wasn't really planned to coincide with the Syncom DAO initiation document. Um, but the, the governance framework we're making for the ambassador program, I'm 100% convinced that, yeah, that, that will be very practical and then like uh, we can learn a lot and exchange uh, experiences there. Um, I, I wonder, should we move to that? So a bit more on the governance framework? What do you think, Ian Tivo? The three? All right, let's talk governance. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I think, um, Felix, in my mind, uh, although it's uh, really um, a community effort and, and the comments on the, the current version of the document uh, are almost, well, I think they're bigger actually than the actual content. So it's, it's really a, a crowdsourced document, um, but you did instigate that. So maybe you could um, give a little bit of an 
Like in, in overview? Okay. Uh, that just to say, okay. When, when we speak of this document, may, maybe we should not speak of, or maybe we should not take the perspective looking on this document as that actually a document. It's really much more meant to be a process. And to start, really a process in which the current ambassadors are ready and the wider community collaborates on step by step defining, setting up a first draft of a governance framework, which they see fit the best to them. So I started this draft. But actually, I would be really happy if 90% of the whole document gets thrown away, but the process of being so incredible, <laughs> we can say, fuck, well, this makes a lot of sense, this doesn't fit. But on the current stage, it outlines a little bit, nothing else than the next state of what happened the last year already, and just formalize it a little bit. So a structure of a holocratic, I like to call it cellular-based governance framework, which yeah, like mentioned before, which does uh, gives full, let's say, independence and self-sovereignty to each of the working groups in a model where we don't have one single entity controlling everything, but rather the collaboration of bodies working together on maybe a common vision, a common mission in the best case. And a lot of techni techni uh, technicalities for sure in the document. The whole thing actually, well, fucking no idea how I should describe that. <laughs> because it's such a... I have a perspective on that. You, this When I read these documents, because I have been with Felix and now a while, and I see a bit of him in that document where I see happened in the proposal at some point he just started seeing what people are doing and then writing down what they have done in a like a story way then in the document itself he, he has this like transition point of like what's now actually principles what's his, what are the some of the like uh, like boundaries or current steps and then spins off to the future and realize puts down a future i although on this current framework we're drafting right now i'm a bit of uh, skeptical about the second part of that but i as a felix joins in he's like i know this is not going to perfect but he has this uh, capability to give a good start the community can start pick and choose and modularizing and and where I'm actually like driving off is because it's called governance framework, and I'm a bit biased on the ILG ratios on Atala Bristol and with their uh, governance and identities. And there is that this framework is more on meta level where Felix goes into, oh, this is a solution, this is a great idea, and he puts all of these seeds in there, which I think should be a bit more meta level, and seeds should be like a secondary appending, so that. Uh, more dived through, but who who knows what will come out? I'm I'm not governance expert myself, and so how do we get it started and tracked and followed and visioned and narrated through the future of people who join in, and so they can have the say and change it so that it fits to more and more people. And also, like once we find this process, I think. The biggest value what this let's say document and the process is able to achieve is building capacity for the community to address properly governance questions because when it comes to governance very often we have to keep in mind that none of us is educated none of us has any fucking idea what this decentralization actually means on on which layer and on which level and I think it's much more important to define a process in which the ecosystem is able to build community capacity over a long term, where it's sure we don't know the answers yet, but we train ourselves already to ask the right questions and making sure that people are able to participate in the process. And most of the governance that we have in our real world, the problem is people can't participate, they can't really engage. And they are not able to identify themselves which the, with the systems which actually govern them. So governance is most really all about education. 
which gives nothing to set up a full document and to impose it on people and say, yeah, this is governance now, and this is the rules by which we go. And yeah, so if they wouldn't have any active and efficient way to engage and contribute, then we would just, yeah, copy, paste the same shit we know from much of our systems, which have been proven to not work really well in many regards, and simply paste them on really cool and promising new tools and technologies that have been developed the past years. So yeah, education and culture for me, I think this is the main part and no document is able to really capture this and never will never be. And therefore really making sure the process is on place and people are in place. Yeah, definitely. That makes me think, um, actually, the most interesting parts is where um, stuff will happen that doesn't fit um, the governance framework. So that it, it, it clashes and it, it, yeah, then you get confronted with like, hmm, okay, maybe it's, uh, it can be a silly thing that's happening, but it can also be showing that there's still work to be done, improvements to be made, lessons to be learned. But I think that's that's fully in line with the, the setup of the document to continuously be aware of what's happening and then improve learn lessons. Mm -hmm. it's something I really like on the syncom though draft as well, right? It emphasizes really strong. It's hey, we are starting this journey. Don't know exactly what happens, but hey, okay, step by step we are moving forward into a unknown territory. Yes, I would say I like the diversity of it. Of it. So you're doing something uh, with ambassador program. I'm trying to do something with the funding program. There's Syncom DAO with a different perspective and framework uh, on top of that. And we also learn from our uh, brothers and partners in Cardano and, and other entities. Um, but you see that a lot of people and a lot of... Uh, uh, organizations or whatever do it a little bit differently and and diff different way but somehow we all reach the goal um and yeah if we can learn from the strengths of each of these programs and weed out maybe a little bit of the limitations and keep that experimenting mindset but at the same time build and keep what what works yeah, then using that culture, uh, because I agree that is essential. Yeah, then then I'm really looking forward to how this will evolve and where we will be in uh, three years from now. Or maybe six months from now, who knows? Whoa, 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 six months is hard for sure. <laughs> Don't put pressure. Every step uh, at, at the right time. And um, it, it's more important to have a clear goal and, and, and a dot on the horizon where we like that uh, navigate to than have every step exactly uh, right. I would say. And so I take uh, a few minutes to share that kind of explosion I mentioned. What can happen in six months on uh, my robot, which is a little bit of note taking and not too much, but it still shows that how time changes interactions and activities. I'm trying to share screen. I'm going to use this method where if nobody says objects, then I'm going to just do it. Perfectly fine, Tiva. That's uh... It's just it's it's so amazing to see this uh, this Myra board. It, it can really take you back all the way like to the very start. And well, the, the, I was doing that earlier today, and then you really see like sticky notes saying they're like, "What do we want to do?" <laughs> so this was like a year ago, ish. Yeah, we have uh, one. What you can see is this is a singularity and ambassador program meeting notes. So just meeting notes, nothing special, and. The first session ambassador program was happened 2022 and um, and like i don't know what is fifth you can see quite a long time ago and first time we didn't even know what kind of meeting notes to take so okay here is a place join in discord server and here to watch and then first discussion you can see agenda i think like how would you like to contribute like the first question and then the second session where the meeting should be placed where what is the purpose of the ambassador program 
and every week meeting, coming together, sharing information from different things was happening, what people are starting to do. And if you zoom out, you see a little that some other meeting notes where I was uh, present, I was taking like in the same timeline. So we were able to go like the more time you move to the right, you just see things happening, more content being created. And at some point there was a, um, a place where we went a bit of like even deep, like um, Peter at the start mentioned like the translation process. And like, that was the first thing from top down in a sense, but I still thought, thought let's, let's try to automate, let's try to streamline it. And then if I go into this, at first it looks like very scribbling and trying stuff out, but over time, over iterations with community members, creating like a bigger plan, like iterations, and then having like a clear process where you can see how things are moving, who is doing what and why we're doing, and scope to a specific uh, tool called Tiver, what was mentioned. And of course, we, we are now trying to figure out okay, the issues there, how can we leverage that, what are the operational activities, and then scaling it up. Now, now we just don't have translators, now we have people who are actually onboarding more translators and and doing starting like creating their own organization around that and like how does this onboarding process works and training itself and like, this kind of process has been quite interesting to follow and back to these meeting notes when I zoom out you can see it's scale smooth still it's more thin line you have this one year breakout point now it starts to lag on me because content is expanding and now we feel full stop. So if the next week you join in ambassador program, you will be joining to the new uh, meeting notes. And I also took a nice slide deck from Dor Garbash to repetition, predictable funding, gather off then decentralization. Like what he mentioned, like, oh, you're doing this. We're we are actually working on this. And it gives like good category to think about, like where, where have you reached? Yeah, that was a, a quick, detour to Marovers, I will share it on people in the What a great chapter. archive, Tivo. Fantastic, wonderful to be able to see all of that back. And you guys must have memories of each Miro board and knowing the discussion behind it and et cetera. Yeah, that's, that's lovely. I suppose you should make an NFT out of that, but um, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, people out there, you can be part of that. You can be part of that Miro board in the next uh, next space.